What's up, family? Peace and blessings, man. Peace and blessings. Mark the Messenger. We're back in our video. This one's going to be about, you know, why you chose to start to experience, you know, your friends and family, you know, not giving you support, not showing you the love that they once gave you. Before God called you, they had all the love for you. You know, the minute God calls you, now you start to know people start to act strange and, you know, start to move different. There's a reason behind that, okay? Everything that's taking place in your life, guys, is all spiritual. Everything, okay? We have spirits working through individuals. This is why I tell people all the time, especially people who watch my videos, you're not dealing with a person. You're not dealing with the individual. You are dealing with the spirit behind it, okay? The spirits that keep people in bondage, the strongholds, the demonic strongholds in their mind, that, that, that Satan, the spiritual wickedness in high places, use them to turn against you. That's the reason why you start to see, you know, your loved ones, the people you have the most love for, your friends, your family, why they start to move different, start to act different. You know, like I told you guys, before before God called you, you know, back when you were of the world, everyone loved you because the world loves its own. Okay, the minute God calls you out of this world and he starts to, you know, take action and, you know, you're taking heed, you're pretty much being obedient. You're hearkening to the voice of the Lord and you're being obedient, whatever God's calling you to do. Now, of course, you're not going to be perfect, but you're doing your best you can to get your spirit right. You do your best you can to deny your flesh because that's the hardest thing to do in this life. Okay, don't be fooled. The hardest thing to do in this life is to deny yourself daily and to pick up your cross and follow Christ. That's the hardest thing to do. Okay, this is why, you know, no matter, every every man, you know, outside of Christ, everyone who, who was for God, they all fell short. Every single one of them. So that lets us know that this is the hardest thing you could, you could do as a man. You know, this is the hardest thing you could do. So when you are living according to the Bible, okay, you're following after righteousness, you're following Christ, okay, you, you, you know, are obeying the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit. You're moving in wisdom. People are going to start to feel, you know, some type of way. But it's not the person that's feeling some type of way. It's the demons that are keeping them in bondage. The unclean spirit, the demonic strongholds. That's what it is. This is spiritual warfare. So when your friends start to, you know, turn against you, uh, your family members, it could even be your own mom, your own, your own dad, your own brother, jealous and envious of you, you know, feeling some type of way. Because you're, you're getting to new heights spiritually. You're leveling up. And most of these people, they ain't trying to give up sin. They ain't trying to give up this world. Let's, let's keep it real. That's why the Bible says the way is narrow and only if you find it. So you're on the narrow path. You had the courage. You had the strength. You had the discipline. You know, you, you had the love in you to do what was, what's right. Okay? You had the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding, the Holy Spirit. And they don't have that. So they feel some type of way. But see, these people don't understand the battles you face. These people don't understand the demons you had to, you know, you had to fast and, and, and pray off of you. They don't understand the war that Satan had to try to bring you back in. Because best believe, the minute you, you start to, you know, walk this narrow path, it's like something gets alerted in the spiritual realm for these demons to come in and attack you. Something gets alerted, bro. Something gets alerted. The minute you leave and depart from evil, you start to notice. And I've been seeing the comments too. Y'all be saying, Mark, you know, I gave up the tarot cards. You know, now I'm getting advertisements of that. You know, Mark, I gave up this, and now these people are trying to come back. Yeah, this is spiritual warfare. So if you're on, if you're if you're looking at this type of stuff, carnal, if if you're thinking, oh, this is just a, this is just a coincidence, you know, nah, man, okay, the devil wants you to go back, okay. In these last days, Satan, he's getting his people, he's gathering his people. The Bible calls them tares, okay. The tares being children of Satan, children of the wicked one, which talks about this in Matthew. Chapter 13, verse 38 to 43. So Satan's trying to get his people. Satan's trying to gather his army to lead as many souls to hell, to the lake of fire. And God's trying to get his chosen. God, God's trying to get his people. Okay, the people who, who want to do his will, the people who have a humble spirit, a humble heart, to want to serve, you know, serve Christ and also to serve others. Okay? God's trying to get his people, the devil's trying to get his people. But the devil's trying to get people who do belong to God to get them to fall short, to get them to stay in their sin. But when you're chosen, no matter how deep you fall, no matter how, how deep, you know, how, how much you backslided, you know, how much you, you, you rebelled and turned against God, no matter what, God, you're always going to come back because you're chosen. You have a purpose. And everything, it, just like in um, Jonah. Ooh, yes, 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 man. Jonah was called to get the people to repent, right? To, to, to get that one city. I forgot what the city is called. Go ahead and leave it in the comments. He was called to, to uh, tell a city to repent because God was going to destroy it, just like how he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, just like how he destroyed uh, the days of Noah, okay? So he was going to destroy that land, but he sent his servant. He sent, he sent his messenger, his prophet, to tell them, you know, you guys got to repent or evil will come upon them. 
but Jonah didn't want to do it. Okay, because like I said, guys, this is hard, bro. This is this is not easy. If this was easy, everyone would be doing it. And the way the way the narrow would be many, and the broad path would be few. But that obviously that's not the case. Okay, so when you start to see how when God's called you to do something and you don't want to do it, you might find yourself in, in a fish's mouth. You might find yourself, uh, you know, in in a place you don't want to be. You know, but it's all. But see, God's preserving you because He has called you. When you were born, you were chosen. That's in the Bible, man. Jeremiah chapter one. When when you were in your womb, God knew who you were before, man. So before Jonah was even uh, born, God was forming him. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna create you to go preach to the city, to be be a, be a prophet, be a messenger, and to warn people of the destruction that I'm about to bring in, unless they repent. And guess what happened? Okay, he got out of the fish's mouth. Okay, he tried to he tried to you know end end himself, man. But in, in the middle of the ocean, think about this: how crazy this is. In the middle of the ocean where no one's around, but God and but see, God is there. See, one thing about the devil: he can't be like God. He can't be like he could try, you know. But the devil can't be everywhere. But God could be everywhere. You could be in the middle of the ocean where you're millions of miles away from a single soul, but God is there. So no matter what happened, Jonah got out of that fish's mouth. Now, people say well, but the Bible doesn't say well. It just says a fish. So I'm just going to say a fish, okay? Uh, so he got out of, that, uh, out of that fish's mouth, and he told the people. The people took heed, surprisingly. You tell people today the destruction God's going to bring upon America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great, and these people won't listen, okay? The only reason why God hasn't destroyed America yet, because there's cities where, you know, you chosen ones reside in. There's even in the Bible, I believe in the book of Ezekiel, where God said he was about to destroy land, but if he found one righteous person, he wouldn't do it. So the chosen ones were all scattered abroad, were all on the four corners upon the earth. So because of that, he, he's, you know, prolonging the destruction. Okay, now destruction will come in America because it's prophetic. Okay, so Jonah told the people, hey, y'all got to repent. They took heed. Not only did the humans fast, the people fasted, the animals even didn't eat as well. They didn't, I, I believe, I'm not sure about drinking, but they didn't eat as well. That is insane. Okay, and because of that, people took heed to it. So when you're chosen, guys, you got to expect, you have to expect that you have a big calling and not everyone's going to support you, bro. Okay, not everyone's going to support you. You know, if you're a YouTuber, not everyone's going to click the like button. Okay, or maybe you got a, a business that you, you're running. Now, the, the people that you talk to every day, the people that you chill with every day, they ain't going to buy your products. They ain't going to show no love. And that's okay. It's okay because best believe, God is going to level you up regardless. Through your obedience, you're going to be blessed. And they're going to be forced to see it. And they're going to be wondering, well, well, dang, how, what did he do that I didn't do? And then jealousy will start to creep up, man. It's just like in Cain and Abel, his own brother, jealous and envious. And it led to, it led to him deleting him, man. Just, you know, that's, I, that's, that's, that's the times we're living in. You have to expect that. This is why I told you guys, you know, why us chosen ones will never fit in. And we're going to have no friends. That's, that's expected. Now, you might have associates. You, you might have brothers in Christ, sisters in Christ. But in these last days, you can't trust nobody, bro. And I know this might be a hard message to, to, to digest. I get it. You know, like I said, guys, friend, brother, two different things. Okay. I have, I have brothers. I have many associates, but a friend, someone who I could trust, someone who I can rely on. I don't have that, man. This is sad truth. Okay. Now, if you have that, then that's a blessing. I believe there's a Bible verse that says that it's a blessing to find a faithful friend. Okay. But I haven't found that. You know, if you, if you found that, then many blessings to you. But you just got to understand, man. Don't be sad, man. Don't be, don't, don't be down on yourself. You know, don't cry. Don't, don't, you know, don't, don't feed into the negative emotions. Why? You start to see your loved ones, people you would never expect, people you say hang out with and, and do whatever with, okay? Start to, you know, act different, start to move different. This is all prophetic. The Bible says that your enemies are going to be in your own household. So when we, when we see that Bible verse, we should know, okay, this is going to happen. What can I do to prepare myself before I get betrayed, before I get backstabbed? I'm going to, this is myself for people. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to hate them or, or talk down on them. No, I'm going to love you from a distance because I know the spiritual warfare is taking place. I know that many people do not have the Holy Spirit. And those, guys, let me tell you something real quick too. Those who don't have the Holy Spirit, they're going to be used. I'm telling you, man. They're going to be used by the devil to attack you. A hundred percent. Okay? A hundred percent. Those who do not have the Holy Spirit have potential to be used by the enemy, Satan the devil, okay, to come in to attack you. And you can't really be mad at them because, like I said, Satan is a great deceiver. Okay, Satan uses people who don't have truth. 
who don't have the Holy Spirit, who don't have God, who don't have Christ. That is who he likes to use. And he's going to try to use, use them to get you because that's how Satan works. He's a coward. He has to use someone to get you. Okay? That's how he works. So, when, when it's, like I said, guys, all wisdom I've given you, all wisdom. So, once you understand this, you shouldn't feel down on yourself. You shouldn't be sad when this is happening. You shouldn't, you shouldn't feel some type of way because you know this is all, you know, all matrix anyways. This is Satan's kingdom. This is Satan's world. He could do what he wants to do. Now, of course, God is in control of everything, and he allows, you know, what's done in this, wor in this world, God allows ahead of time. Okay, so let's make that very clear. But Satan is the God of this world according to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 to 4. Every time I bring that out, people are like, no, Mark, that's not true. Listen, we, we follow truth. We follow the Bible. We don't follow our emotions. We don't follow our feelings. If that's what the Bible says, then that's the truth. Regardless of how you feel, regardless of how your emotions, and see, understand this too. When you're led by your emotions, when you're led by your feelings, it pretty much means that you're carnal. Okay, that's what it means. You're not led by the spirit, the spirit of truth. You are led by, you know, this, your flesh, your carnality. And this is how Satan's going to get a lot of y'all to take the mark of the beast. This is how Satan's going to send a lot of people to the lake of fire because they're not led by the spirit of truth. They're not led by the Holy Spirit. They're led by their feelings, their emotions, what they feel is right. Okay? We got we got to be bold. We got to be fired up. No time to play no games, man. And see, when you're not lukewarm, when you're not worldly, when you don't have the love of the world in you, when you're not like everybody else, you're set apart. People are going to start looking at you like you're some weird, crazy person. But like I say, guys, all prophetic. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, okay, a peculiar people. So that means that peculiar means strange. So wait, wait, you're strange because you don't want to celebrate Halloween. You don't want to dress up like, like a, a devil or a demon or a witch, you know, or whatever people dress up these days, or like a celebrity. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to you don't want to celebrate Christmas because we know that Christmas isn't Jesus' birthday. Okay. We don't want to celebrate, you know, Easter because we know the origins behind that. People look at you in and not just the people of the world, uh, so-called Christians, so-called followers of Christianity. They're gonna look at you weird, Catholics, all that. They're gonna look at you so weird and crazy because you don't want to partake in pagan holidays. Man, this is just this is how you know most people they're lost, man. Satan has the sea, has blinded the minds, okay? They're going to call you weird because you don't want to eat the unclean foods. You're not going to judge and condemn other people for doing it, but you, because you got convicted and God has convicted your spirit, you're not going to want to eat shrimp, lobster, and crab, okay? Uh, for another thing, maybe, you know, God's convicted you of a, you know, I can't smoke weed no more. You know, I can't get drunk. Okay, I can't fornicate. I can't be a, a practice wardom. You know, God's convicted you and you ain't trying to do that no more. People are going to look at you strange and weird and crazy. All because you love God, all because of your obedience, all because you know, you know, that the way is narrow and only few are going to find it. And you know that there's a reward at the end, eternal salvation. Now, this is not something that we work for because this is a free gift, but through our faith, it produces works. So our faith produces, okay, I'm not going to do those things. I may fall short. Okay, I may fall short from the glory of God, but I'm not going to be a slave to it. Nah, you know, so, man, I hope you guys got blessed by this message, man. This is why people start to move different, act different. Your so-called friends, your so-called family, guys. Don't be too. Don't don't be surprised when this happens, man. I mean, even the people you would never expect. Don't be surprised, man. Don't be surprised because best believe God shows you before they do it. God, God will show you, especially if you're you know you're in tune with the Spirit. You're like a spiritual person, okay? Holy Spirit filled. You're gonna see it before it happens, man. You're gonna see it. God will show you, just like how He showed His Son Jesus Christ before Judas betrayed Him. Best believe it, man. So if you guys got blessed by this message, don't forget to pound the like button, subscribe to the channel, share this video on all social media platforms, and share, let me know your experiences in the comments, what you went through, the spiritual warfare that you went through through your friends and family. I love you guys so much. I am out. Smart the Messenger. Peace.